Hello, how are you? Yesterday I was talking about uh, the promise of blessing that Jesus has given us. Uh, he's told us that uh, he will bless us when we do uh, a couple of things and not physical things, but uh, when we follow his word and when we, we do according to his will. And I uh, want to continue this series of uh, the various blessings that God has promised us. Uh, from the Bible and you told every child that is going to give them uh, this blessing So there are ten blessings that I compiled and the first blessing was uh, the the promise of blessing Sorry, the, the, there are ten promises and the first promise is a promise of blessing So today I'll be speaking about the second promise, which is a promise of peace uh, Is there some time in your life where you feel you're not peaceful and things are just going uh, haywire? left, right, and center. You don't understand how to uh, deal with situations. Uh, this world is very chaotic. Right now we're seeing uh, uh, the American elections are happening and everybody is uh, having no peace. People are wondering what's going to happen if this guy wins or the other guy wins. W w how is the world going to be? Even not only just in the U.S., everywhere in the world, people are just wondering and asking themselves, how is it going to be? Is there going to be some issues um, after the elections also we see what's happening in israel uh they, there's so much tension in the middle east right now and there's no peace people have no peace and but remember one thing god has promised us peace yes he, he has told us that uh i give you a promise of peace and and i want to show you exactly how that peace you're going to claim it right now so let's go to the book of isaiah uh chapter 26 verse 3 the book of isaiah 26 verse 3 it says Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Thou will keep him in perfect, uh, perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee? Because he trusteth in thee. So the moment you trust in God, you're going to get peace. Now, like a little child, I, I when I was a little baby, um, let, let's say just a, a young boy, about uh, three, four, five years, I used to trust a lot my father whenever we were, we used to live in the village somewhere. Um, uh, in Kenya and uh, whenever we were traveling or we were walking somewhere because uh, our home there was used to be some bushes and there was a swamp so I used to trust my father so much and uh, whenever we were crossing the small river at the swamp I used to hold on his hand and I trust him because I knew he is stronger than me and whenever I could sleep and uh, it's like I'm falling, I could hold on him even much more. Why? Because I trusted in him. I knew he's, he's uh, strong enough and he's also faithful enough not to let me uh, be carried away by the water. So I put all my trust in him. And, and whenever I feared, because uh, near a swamp, of course, there are some bushes and things like that. And, and you're, you're, you're worried, you're scared. Uh, what if an animal, what if something comes out from there? I always trusted him and I, and I held his hand so much because I knew this, this is my, my hope. And I knew he will never leave me, he will never forsake me. Now how much more can it be with our God uh, in heaven? Who is our, 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 our creator, the one who created us, the one who created every animal. In my case, my own dad... Uh, could also be vulnerable in one way or another because he never created the animals. He never created maybe the snakes or he never created the other uh, predators uh, in, in the bush. So maybe if something could have happened, he did not have the full... Uh, he, he could not give me full assurance 100% because maybe him he could also be in danger. But look at this scenario. God created even these predators. God created these situations. Uh, uh, the minds of the people, he created every... Every human being, every creature, every uh, uh, every piece of anything, you know, he has power over everything. So you can count on him. You can you can bank on that, and you can tell him, God, I know you created all these things, and I know you have the power, and you have promised me from your word that you'll never leave me, neither will you forsake me. You will be with me all the days of my life, and. And it will be like this. And I put my trust in you. So the moment you put your trust in Jesus, then you get perfect peace. There's nothing which can separate you. Apostle Paul says, not, not anything above, not anything below, not anything to come, not anything which is even here right now can separate you from the love of Christ. So if Jesus loves you that much, then why would you be worried about where you're going to get your peace? Peace comes. Peace comes by only trusting. When you trust,
trust when uh, let's say for example there's a there's a, a, a nation uh, under war let's say like the way we see in the in the uh, in the Congo and we see in some other uh, Western West Africa countries where they are fighting and the moment you see the soldiers maybe the UN is coming there and there are some uh, uh, soldiers from the uh, maybe African armies and all those and, and they're there trying to protect people now what happens you start feeling some peace you're like okay something is going to happen these people they we have to trust this uh, guys, this military who are here to bring the peace. You see, God is much more than the military. Is much more than even the things that you could ever imagine. He will give you perfect peace because he is the prince of peace. He is the king of glory. He is the one who has promised us that he will do this. And you can always bank from his word because the Bible tells us that God is not man that he can lie. He cannot say, I will give you this or I will do this. And then he can wake up one day and say, no, 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 I was just kidding. There is no one day he can say that. As long as you follow him. Yesterday we were reading about the promise of blessing. And I told you and I showed you here. The way people interpret the promise of blessing. They try to interpret it like when you give God something, then he will bless you back. It's like when you give 10,000, give you 100,000 back. No, God does not do business. He does not do trading. He just wants you to follow his word. He wants you to be faithful in what he says. You see, in the promise of blessing, uh, God was telling people that uh, whosoever keeps his laws. Now, right now, we are not keeping the Mosaic law. No, we are keeping the law of following the gospel. God gave us a law. He gave us a command. He told us, believe the gospel. If you believe the gospel, then he's going to be with you. And you put all his, uh, your trust in him and you do according to his will. Then he's going to bless you. Just like a, a young children, what, what happens? If you're a young child and you're always uh, uh, going against your father, what's going to happen? He's not going to bless you. He's not going to give you goodies. He's not going to give you good stuff. But when you're always faithful, when you're always doing what he wants you to do, when you're always on his side, when you're always trusting in him, when you're always asking him for advice, left, right, and center, he's going to give you everything that you want. So God is not a miser or he's not, he, 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 he's not the way people think that... Uh, Yes, because you're saved now is a life of misery. No, it's not about life of misery. You, you get into a life of misery because you don't trust in God. He says that, do the birds of the air work yet they eat? Do they, do, does a worrying yourself add even an hour of to your life? Can worrying add you an hour of your life? No. Remember the rich man, the rich man story. He, the, there was this guy who just uh, uh, had a huge farm. It's written in the Bible. He had a huge farm, and then he harvested his food and put it in the grant, uh, in, in the store. And then he said, "Okay, my heart now rejoice. You, you have food and uh, and uh, and uh, th things to drink, wine to drink, water to drink. Now you're ready. You're set. Now relax and enjoy." And what did God tell her? He tell him, "You are a big fool. You think because you have these things now you're settled? No." Tonight, 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 your life is wanted from you. So it's not about trusting in your own self. It's about trusting in God because whether you work or you don't work, whether you do things or you don't do things, just open up your mind and tell God, okay, God, I want to gain some uh, something for myself and I want to pay some bills, I want to do this and that. Remember, God, help me in this. Give me a formula. God will give you a formula to do a simple job somewhere or something happens or or a, a certain business deal, or or God sends someone to you. You see, God, God is he, he does not like to see his children suffer, but we only suffer because we are, allow ourselves to suffer because we don't put our trust in the Almighty God. All right. So He has promised us peace. So peace you can only get it if you put your trust a hundred percent on God. Whether things are going bad, whether the world is really going bad, please put your trust in God. And the only way you can put your trust in God is first by believing the gospel. Do you believe the gospel first? Do you understand what the gospel is? Because unless you become a child of God, you can never be able to trust him. And, uh, and uh, you, you see, the Bible says in the, in the book of John that God does not hear sinners. So if you're a sinner, if you're away from him, he doesn't hear you. But he can only hear you because you're his child. And the only way to become his child is by believing the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it says, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, 
which you received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. This is exactly what the Apostle Paul is telling us. If you believe the gospel, how that Christ died by shedding his blood for us, you receive that atonement and you say, God, I know you died for me. You died for me. You shed your blood for me. And I trust in you. And I not leave you. And I not think about anyone else. I not put my trust in anything else. I not put my trust in how much I can avoid sin. I not put my trust in how much I give in the church. I not put my trust in anything else. Then I know, God, you're there for me. You, you promise me. You promise me that you'll walk with me. A righteous man will fall seven, seven times, seven times. I don't know how many times is written. But he will rise up again. Why? Because God is holding his hand. He is in perfect peace. So that's the only way you can become a child of God. Believe the gospel. The gospel is for you to believe. Because right now, we are living under time of grace. And a time is coming when there will be no more grace. This is the only time you can believe the gospel. This is the only time. When you believe the gospel, you can go on. Confess out, tell God now what you have believed. You see, confession comes after you believe. It doesn't come when before you believe. No, it is comes after you believe because you believe from your heart. You don't believe from your mind. You have to uh, hear the gospel, understand the gospel, then you believe the gospel, then you can confess out what you have believed. If you love a certain lady, you don't go and tell her, hey, I love you, and then now you start loving her. No, you first love the person, and then you go and tell her, hey, this is how I feel about you. That's exactly about the gospel. Believe first from your heart, and then tell God, and tell others, confess to others what you have believed, all right? So God bless you, and have a great time. So I'll be speaking about uh, the other promises also we have the promise of forgiveness the promise of reaping and so we have so many promises that god has promised us so stay tuned and watch out for the next one tomorrow god bless you